Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Libra. If Libra is your solar, lunar, <coughs> excuse me, solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. All right, all right, all right. So our card tonight is the Princess of Swords. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. It is free to subscribe. All right. So we have this large eight over here. So it just, it seems like the, the number eight is really important this week, this next cycle of time. We have on its side the infinity. We also have a bird kind of perched here. You can see, where's my stick? There you are. We have a bird, a bird perched on the infinity sign. <clears throat> so, I mean, immediately what comes to mind here is this feeling of maybe somebody who has transitioned. Um, spouse, lover, family member, um, mother, father, child, somebody um, very close to you because the infinity sign, absolutely a soul bond, a soul contract, if you will. Um, you know, something that you are uh, ever manifesting together. Your consciousness is intertwined. They are here with you. And it is a reminder in those moments when you feel, well, when you feel so very alone, when you... Um, you know, you sit in a dark room at night, gazing out the window, thinking, um, you know, I'll never hear them laugh again. We'll never hold each other's hands. We'll never, uh, you know, go for a walk or, or cry together, you know, never again. Well, the thing is, they're with you. They're absolutely with you um you know they they never actually leave us they're so much a part of us they travel with us through time and space and beyond when all of those constructs kind of <coughs> dissipate um this is this is a person that is as much you as you are yourself, okay? Um, and so I know these, you know, these moments can arise in our life where, um, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, you know, that they're not here, that they're not experiencing the joys and the, you know, the hardships, the, the the little mundane things and and um you know all the rites of passage and so on uh but you know it's i absolutely do believe you know i i know um you you watch these readings and stuff sometimes the stuff people talk about it's like i don't know if they even believe what they're saying right um <coughs> you know and so, but I do believe this. I absolutely do. Um, you know, I, I feel, um, I don't, I don't know how to explain it really. Just that it's almost like being woven into the same thing. I think of the universe. I think of our existence almost like a fractal, um, you know, an infinite fractal plane. We all mirror one another, right? And 
some of those cells are just right next to us and those are our people those are our conscious uh entanglements and so uh you know i look at this and i think this is an important thing now we are um as i do this reading in the beginning of memorial day weekend which in the u.s um is a you know a holiday it's kind of the opener of summer in most places <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i'm sorry i'm still at the end of my cough here um and it is a time when uh people who have served in the military you know they they've passed away usually i think it's when they're in the in a conflict right they're deployed or they're serving during a conflict or, or whatever it is and they pass away well i always forget that kind of and i'm and it's terrible to say that but um you know in the midwest upper midwest where i'm from everybody kind of goes out and puts flowers on all of the graves and everybody is remembered so i forget that it is technically a military focused um holiday veterans and and so on um but it is a time that we are uh you know thinking about those who who have who have passed I myself, I was just thinking my, uh, my mother, my biological mother, her, um, it's been 27 years, I think. Was it 27 years this year? Um, yeah. And I can't believe that, you know, it goes by so fast, but at the same time, it's like, they're right there with you. They're right there with you. And so this is a big feeling here, big feeling in this in this energy this week now i wonder what else is going on because <coughs> i'm sorry again oh, i did some readings early in the morning and i felt much better but by the end of the day and it's partially because you know i'm outside a lot and um allergies on top of everything else all right let's see so we have a person right here wearing a hat it looks like they're walking i almost think of hiking like this is somebody who has been hiking uh we have a large z right here so i wonder if we have a z name um we also have a bag here and it looks like it almost kind of looks to me like a um i don't know like some kind of instrument in there now I look at this and it looks like kind of an arrow going forward, arrow going backwards. And I'm totally, I'm, you know, I almost feel like this is, this is somebody in your life who, um, I almost think it's like maybe a brother or a good friend, maybe, um, your child, but it seems to me, and I'm going to get a drink here. Um, it seems to me that this is somebody who has really not kind of, not kind of gotten into the, the motion of kind of that, uh, you know, almost like the American dream, right? Uh, getting the, going to school, getting the good career, family, house, whatever, you know, <laughs> that old outmoded thing. That <laughs> who can do it? Who can meet all of those goals? I don't know. Um, but I feel like this is somebody who it's like they've gone back and forth constantly with whatever they're doing. Maybe they are always like doing every time you see them, they have like a new job or they're, you know, on some new, um, exciting you know, planned for their life and, and, um, they, from everybody on the outside kind of looking in at them, it's kind of like, wow, uh, they're never going to get it together. Like this is somebody who is just kind of, uh, eking it out, right. Trying to figure things out. And, 
um, you know, and it feels worrisome to most people and maybe even to you at times. But I think you also know this person well enough to know um, that they're just on their own path. It's very much like the fool energy. It's and not to say that they're a fool, but they have this ability to kind of, you know, push away the constraints of, of you know, the condition, conditioning that most of us go through being kind of in, institutionalized and on this, you know, uh, this we're all kind of taught that we need to do similar things, have similar, um, you know, uh, uh, chapters of life and, and meet these certain goals and, you know, whatever. And this is somebody who never bought into it. Okay. Um, do they need some help sometimes? Yeah. Don't we all, right? Uh, I feel like you're very protective of them. You're very protective. Um, I almost feel like this, this, kind of feel like this person that you the person that has transitioned is on the mind because maybe this is like a parent or somebody who is a caregiver for you and the sibling or or whoever a good friend or whoever it is and um it's kind of like you believe that the you know you you know that everybody has their own story their own path and they have to live it Nobody can tell them what to do. You can't fix it for them, um, but you still worry, okay? But I think this other person is really coming into the mix, really in your space and, and bringing those energies and comforting you because um, it's most definitely uh, this kind of like, yeah, you know, you have to let them. You have to let them. You know, be whoever they are, if we understand that or not, you know. And so I think it's kind of like, I almost wonder too, if there's like a sense of loneliness because there is kind of this lack of family closeness in your life right now, and mostly your family of origin. Now you may have your own family that you've created or your chosen family, but I feel like this is one of your last ties to your or family of origin. And, um, there's not the closeness there. There's a heart to heart closeness, but you might not see them very often. And I think that you worry, right? You worry about what they're doing, how they're doing. Are they okay? Where are they? You know, these kinds of things. And, um, you know, sometimes they're probably struggling. Most of the time they're probably just living. Right. And, um, and so I think this is kind of a sign of, you know, obviously, um, you know, you probably check in with them as much as you can. Um, but I think it's kind of like, you know, let your, let your mind rest because things are going to go how they go no matter what, you know, you can't, some people you just can't contain. Um, you know, I've had over the years, friends and family that, um, especially have had mental illness and things like that addiction for in my life addiction is a big one um i'm in recovery and so obviously i know a lot of addicts from my life in addiction um but i'm almost you know i just got eight years so i always say i'm about 10 years but eight years technically and um as much as you want to save the people that you love like they have to you know they have to be willing. And the other thing is sometimes, and this isn't so much addiction or mental health, but sometimes we might look at something and think, wow, their life must be really empty. They don't have all these things or luxuries um, that I have. And they must really be struggling. Well, you know, um, come to find out, they're maybe the happiest people you've ever met. You just never know, right? Um, so... Uh, yes, I, I do believe this is some kind of family, um, you know, kind of uh, family meeting happening on different levels of consciousness and being. And, um, and so, yes, please keep your mind at ease. 
Um, there's a lot of love here. And I think that's the thing. It's just remember to show them the love that you have. You know, um, that's what's important. So we have an A right here, a large A, maybe a name. And I just, so we have the moon there. We have kind of a cocoon here. And I feel like there just has been, and I see it says C-R-Y, cry, cry, cry. I feel like it's just been this kind of, um, I almost feel like you just have run out of steam in the last few days. There's melancholy here. I feel like it's like you just want to retreat from everything. Um, and I think a lot of it is that maybe you're burnt out. I think you've been very busy. Um, and when it, I think what it really, I mean, really is, and I, I don't like to be this person, but, you know, um, a lot of it here, it seems like needing to rest needing to allow yourself some time to um, take a break as much as you can. And I feel like, well, when we have, it looks like, it looks like a monkey head. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, that looks like a dog. And I think this one down here looks like a dog. You can see um, the kind of the head right here with the nose up. And the ear, it's kind of got its paw like this, like it's playing. <clears throat> you know, like when dogs are cute and they do that and they put their bahas down and then they kind of, you know, <laughs> do that sound. Um, so cute. Uh, but kind of doing that. And then we have a person here who is smiling. Okay. Um, and this is still this. We have the um, infinity sign. But here I see we have the body, we have the head, we have the eye, the mouth, maybe some hair up here. Um, and I do feel like there's a sense of like a hug, like hugging, right? And then the messenger, the messenger bird up here. So I do feel like there is this sense of, yes, like you, um, you need to take time for yourself, <laughs> of course. Um, get some rest, but you're loved. You are so loved. And this is a period of time where I think it's so important for you to express the love that you want and need um, to yourself, right? Uh, you know, I know and I understand the, the impulse, the desire for people around us or, or even wanting to find a relationship so that you can find the love that you've been wanting in your life. But, uh, and I'm not going to say that you can't love, you can't love anybody until you love yourself. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea, but, um, <coughs> I mean, it sounds plausible, but who knows, right? Um, I do think that we can be the love that we need. I really do believe that. Um, does it feel the same at first? No. Uh-uh. Sometimes it feels like such a put on. Sometimes it feels like I'm just going through the motions. This is kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, like doing the affirmations in the mirror, the positive self-talk. And I've said that in other readings. It's like almost kind of, it feels weird at first. Um, but when you commit to it, when you commit to yourself and um, you spend time courting yourself, being with yourself, doing the things that you would do for somebody that you are in love with, doing those things for you, doing them, you know, over time, confidently. I'll tell you what, um, that kind of love is 
maybe not as good as like the love of a mother or child, right? Those are like, and father, of course. Um, but it's, it's dang near, right? It's dang near. You might learn how to unconditionally love. You might mess around and learn how to unconditionally love yourself. Can you imagine? Um, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm doing the same thing. Um, so, you know, I think it's important. Uh, it's important to know though, that you are not alone. You have this family around you and they might not be here in their physical manifestation, but they are with you and they are showing you signs. I absolutely know they are. Now that dog down here, devotion, loyalty, love. Okay, um, these are all things that are important to you, and they're things that, uh, yeah, you deserve. And, um, you know, the journey of finding that in somebody else with somebody else, uh, it's a it's a natural instinct, right? It's something that makes sense, we all do it, and I get that, um, but. You know, at the same time, it's kind of awesome to be a little revolutionary and do this for yourself, okay? Figure out what is, how would I even do that? What would that look like for you? Here's a fun uh, kind of, you know, I don't know, uh, thing to contemplate, a thought experiment, whatever. What would you do? What would this look like? What would it take for you to begin to believe it? You know, what would it take? What would it, how, how would this, and then if it is something that is perfected, what would it end up looking like, right? I don't know. I think this is a fun thing to think about. I think about it a lot. I do. Um, you know, and maybe employing something like uh, transcendental meditation using mantras might be something worthwhile. So there's an idea. I keep seeing J's, J, J, J all over here. Um, but the where we said, I said there was the cry, right? Um, I do, I feel like it's, there's a lot of crying happening, but I think that it's really, um, quite cathartic actually. And, um, and I think it's something that is, it's needed. It's something that you've been needing, um, kind of releasing that, that pent up energy. And, um, and so, you know, cry it out. Definitely cry it out. I love a good cry. I cry a lot. I'm a crier. My husband doesn't cry like ever. Shout out to Devin Serpentero. Um, not often anyways. And I'm always like, don't you just want to cry sometimes? Well, I guess some people don't, you know, and that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. But I like it. I like to cry. I might not like it right in the moment, but... All right, let's see. So we have MT right here. MT. Maybe a name. We have a person kind of leaning forward. Kind of leaning forward, grab out like this. Grasping at something. Dancing. I almost feel like it's a, it's like a feeling of, mm, what is this? Not wanting to be left out. It feels like not wanting to be left out. Um, always afraid, I don't know, like always afraid that you're just there because people are being nice, 
but not wanting to be left out. There's just almost like this feeling of you don't believe that people like you or they don't want you around. Um, and I think this was something that m it feels like it was much more prominent when you were younger. Uh, I feel like you've built your own world quite a bit. And, and I think you've done well. You've done well with that. But there's still, there's this feeling of, well, like not being picked, right? Um, in PE or whatever. That feeling when they had to pick teams, <coughs> excuse me, when they had to pick teams, and you wouldn't get, I wouldn't anyway. I never got picked first or like I was la almost last most of the time, sometimes last. Um, I didn't like playing sports. <laughs> I was always afraid of stuff hitting me in the face. Um, <coughs> excuse me again. But I do, I feel like there's that feeling, that kind of dread, you know, and I, I feel like that follows you. Uh, it follows you. But it's like, I don't know, it's almost like um, this is a time in your life where uh, I feel like you've made this fulfilling life, but this thing still lingers. But it's kind of like um, finally being able to look at it, you know, and really own it. I feel this way sometimes. Um, it has been the driving force of a lot of things in my life. If I admit that to myself or not. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in letting it go. Right? I'm interested in, in figuring out how to, um, you know, process this. Integrate it. Let it go from, from being one of the, the drivers of my life. Um... And I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What is happening in your life? I feel... I don't know. I feel like it's... Uh, I, I, keep, I keep getting this like feeling. It's almost like... Um, like in-laws. Sister-in-law. I don't, something, a community, within your community, maybe you're like in a, um, some kind of club or, uh, you're like a, your church congregation or I don't know, something, but it's like really kind of clicky. I just, I feel like it's so, it's such a, you've just like at a point in your life where it's like not even, um, when you are in the privacy of your life with your family or with yourself and your, you know, or your animals or whoever it is that you, you're with there, um, it's not even something you think about or consider that much. But out there in the world, it just feels, um, I just feel like there's no interest in trying to kind of, you know, navigate all of that. And, um, and I think this is a time where you're trying to kind of refocus, refocus things, do some work, figure it out. Um, so it's not so much, there's not all the mental and emotional gymnastics. And I think that's where the great success is here, right? Is first of all, being able to recognize these things within self, um, but also then, you know, being motivated to take action, to do something with it, okay? Um, so for that, I, you know, immediately congratulate yourself. Please, I congratulate you. Uh, you know, it's not easy work, and sometimes this stuff never gets resolved all the way, right? And sometimes it's pretty, um, it goes pretty dormant, and then just the oddest thing will bring it up, right? So be kind to yourself. You're doing, you're doing important work, you know, and that in itself is a great success. So 
Um, yes, Libra. And of course it's a Libra doing it. So that makes sense to me. Obviously it would be a Libra. <laughs> you all are. You're like the great healers of the world. Okay, let's see. We have the wild offering oracle cards. And I'm going to go ahead and flip on through. I'm going to stop where it feels right. And it says courage. Divine courage is not the absence of fear, but a nudge that says, keep going, do it. Don't worry. All will be well. You have to get quiet enough to hear it. Dear divine, may I feel your courage and your will. All right. Yes. Okay, Libra, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. All right. Other than that, um, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, so I hope you all have a lovely day, a lovely evening, whenever you're listening to this. Uh, I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in a few days. Good night.